evening, everyone. Welcome to our June 8th uh, East Block School District board meeting. If you could please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So before we start tonight, um, I just wanted to let everyone know that Mr. Tu was not able to join us tonight, but we do have with us um, Mrs. Mary Ann Sadowski, who is um, with our law firm um, here to be with us tonight. Um, also too, I just wanted to say that I know that um, there are people who are anxious to hear what the board has to say about some of the things that have happened since Friday. We do have um, a statement and a letter that we do intend to read at the end of our board meeting before public comment. But right now we want to take the opportunity to start our meeting with um, recognizing our retirees. So I would like to call to order the regular meeting of the Kings Park Board of Education. Please be advised that this meeting is being recorded. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Egan now for our retiree recognition night. Dr. Egan. Okay, good evening, everybody, and, and welcome. Uh, tonight is an exciting night for us. We have 32 retirees in total that we would like to honor this evening who retired either last June or between last June and, and this June. Um, we're excited that. The pandemic has, has not um, completely prevented us from, from recognizing our retirees who gave their, their time and efforts to the school district for so many years, and we're so appreciative. So uh, this format is also super helpful because many of our retirees from last June now live in different places of the country and are able to join us this evening on, on Zoom and, and be properly recognized. Um, I, I can see one person in particular that I know is, is seated somewhere in New Hampshire, and uh, it's great to see him on, on our screen this evening. So I'm going to pass this off to Dr. Craig, who's going to be our, um, our leader through our retirement recognition. Dr. Craig. Good evening, uh, Dr. Egan and Board of Education. Thank you very much. Uh, so tonight we do have the opportunity to recognize our 2019-2020 retirees and our 2020-2021 retirees. Uh, last year, due to the pandemic, yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait. we did not have the opportunity <laughs> to uh, recognize our employees. Uh, so this year, uh, we're fortunate we have everyone here. Uh, together on our Zoom call, uh, some who have been retired for a year, some living out of the state. So we're happy everyone is here together this evening. Uh, in addition, for all the retirees this evening, uh, we do have a commemorative plaque uh, representing your service to Kings Park. Uh, we'll be sending, sending that to all our employees after our board meeting this evening. And I would like to just thank Ms. Capabianco, who worked extremely hard in preparing those plaques, and we'll get them to our employees uh, this week. Uh, so first, uh, I would like to start with um, going through our schools first and first uh, Kings Park High School. Uh, so to recognize the uh, retirees at Kings Park High School, I would like to uh, introduce uh, Mr. Jason Huntsman, uh, principal of Kings Park High School. If Mr. Huntsman is out there. Mr. Craig, I'm going to take Mr. Huntsman's place uh, this evening. Hey, Dr. Lesser. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so I have several retirees this evening uh, that we want to wish well. The first one is Janet Iris has been with the district 19 years, started in special services and then came to the high school in the fall of 2007, working in the guidance department. A quote from guidance counselor Sharon Cohen says, Janet Iris was the face of the guidance office. She made sincere connections with anyone that walked through the office door. 
Janet has a heart of gold and was able to handle any situation that arose in the counseling center. She brought life to our office, often by celebrating each and every holiday. Janet truly cared about performing her best at all times. Her love for students, her sense of humor, and her positive attitude make, made working with her an absolute pleasure. On behalf of the members of the Kings Park High School, Janet, we congratulate you on your retirement. Our next retiree at the high school is Sherry Grossman. Sherry Grossman has been part of the Kings Park District for 27 years. According to uh, Carol uh, Pastantino, Sherry is one of the sweetest, kindest, and caring aides in the building. From Lana, Sherry was my person when I started here at the high school. She was the voice of reason that I needed to hear. I miss her great advice, but I really miss seeing her smiling face every morning and her biscotti cookies. Other colleagues said Sherry was a pleasure to work with. Miss Bean said she sprinkled the halls with kindness. Everyone at the high school sends their best wishes to you, Sherry, as you enjoy your retirement and your new grandbaby. Our next retiree is uh, Susan Wasp. Ms. Wass has been working at Kings Park High School for 34 years as an art teacher. She has maintained her passion for art and love of her students, who she refers to as her cherubs. This has been her signature term for her students. She has inspired many students over the 34 years in the pursuit of love of art. She has taken students to art museums and has helped students display their own art in various shows, art shows across Long Island. Ms. Wass is the advisor for the National Honor Society and has brought graduate students back to the high school on National Honor Society night to highlight their successes as they have pursued the arts and design. Ms. Blaurock stated, over the years I have seen her take new teachers and student teachers under her wing and mentor them on her own. No matter how busy she is with the demands of teacher, grading, lesson plans, emails, parent contacts, she will always stop in her tracks when asked to help those in need. She does this very selfishly without a hint of being bothered, unquote. Ms. Wass' passion for art has impacted many students, and she will be missed at the high school. Ms. Wass will continue to create art and be part of the many art shows across Long Island. Our next retiree is Melissa Fink. Melissa Fink has been working in Kings Park School District for 19 years as a math teacher at the high school. Ms. Fink was the advisor for the math team which won many competitions over the years. She grew an extraordinary team of students um, who with her encouragement and team wins, more and more students joined the math team. Ms. Fink was also a member of the Suffolk County Math Teachers Associ Association and had a leadership role over the years. Melissa has dedicated her time and energy to her work as an educator and volunteering her time with various organizations. Ms. Harvey wrote, during Thanksgiving, Melissa volunteers her time at soup kitchens. She has fostered and pro uh, promoted excellence in her students. Ms. Fink believes high expectations and the real belief students can rise to the occasion has shown her students that mathematics is a learned skill that can be mastered. Ms. Fink is currently enjoying her time in Boston with her two new grandchildren, and we wish her all the best. And the last member of our high school retirement is Mary Ellen Fay. Mary Ellen Fay has been part of the Kings Park School District for 22 years as a science teacher. Ms. Fay was the teacher advisor for ISR program, and here is the rundown of her impact on the success of that program. Ms. Fay has seen 34 Intel and Regeneron semifinalists. 
two finalists were awarded uh, to the Regeneron program. Nine Seaman and Westinghouse winners and two finalists. 10 students went to the internationals and all won grand awards. An impressive record for Kings Park High School, our students, and certainly the advisor, Ms. Bay. Ms. Bucko says, Mary Ellen is a wonderful science teacher and mentor for all her students. We have enjoyed having her as a member of the science department. We will miss her. Ms. Doherty wrote, I am so grateful to have been able to work with Mary Ellen over the last 14 years. She has been such a mentor and a role model for me. She was always there for me whenever I needed help from her. I will miss teaching across the hall from her. She's a true friend and I will miss her greatly. Ms. Zoff wrote, Mary Ellen is one of the kind kindest and most compassionate people I have ever been fortunate to work with. She always can make me laugh. I will truly miss her. The overall feeling within the science department is that Mary Ellen is a true professional, selfless in her work and care for students, her love of humanity and all living things. And just to give you an example, I was told today that Mary Ellen's love of animals runs deep, so deep that she administered CPR to a rat in a laboratory at, the Sto at Stony Brook University. On behalf of all the members of the high school, Mary Ellen, we congratulate you on your retirement. Thank you, Mr. Craig. Thank you, Dr. Lessler. Um, next, we have uh, principal of William T. Rogers Middle School, Dr. Lauren Moreno, who will be recognizing our retirees from the middle school. Dr. Moreno. Thank you, Dr. Craig. And as a building principal, it is always my honor to recognize the hard work of our staff, especially our retirees. And to be able to acknowledge these individuals tonight is just a great celebration of decades of dedication, passion, and commitment to making our school and our whole community better. So just so grateful to have the opportunity. We're going to recognize five folks from William T. Rogers, um, and each and every one of them has left an indelible mark. So I'm going to speak about them in alphabetical order. First, we have Pete Droughts. Mr. Pete Droughts has been a dedicated employee on our custodial staff since 2006, and he's worked at both RJO and the middle school. Pete's day is very different than so many of our other employees because he comes in once the school day is done and he works all evening and into late nights. I've seen him here very, very late at night uh, to get our building ready for the next day. In fact, he's here right now with me. Um, he is always here to lend a hand, especially at our night events, and he's always jumping in to help solve a problem. Pete, we're really going to miss your humor and your kindness, and I will personally miss your restaurant recommendations. Yeah. Uh, when I spoke with yeah. Pete about his retirement, he said that what he'll miss most is all of the people. He reminded me that our colleagues often become our second family because we spend so much time together. He also shared that he really will not miss the late nights. Uh, Pete, we wish you luck as you move down to South Carolina. We hope that you really enjoy being near your daughter there, and congratulations on okay. your retirement. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Michelle Feldman is our next retiree. It's my pleasure to speak about Michelle as well. She retired last year and we have missed her dearly at William T. Rogers Middle School. I remember meeting Ms. Feldman on my very first day here in Kings Park. It was her first day too. We started together. And if you did get a chance to meet Michelle when she was here, she really is one of the funniest and most creative people and teachers that I've known. Um, always very tech savvy and thoughtful about her instruction. And Ms. Feldman always created home and careers lessons that really helped our students to learn those real world skills that are really some of the most critically important things that our children really need to know as they enter the world and as they grow into adults. Um, since 2002, she has taught countless students the importance of budgeting, cooking, to being a smart consumer of technology and advertising, um, just overall being good people and taking care of themselves. And she's compassionate, energetic, and a true professional. So we miss you, Ms. Feldman, if you're out there tonight, and we hope you're enjoying your retirement. I am also excited to speak about Mr. Mel Fling tonight. Mr. Fling, also known as Mel and Mr. Mel, has been a dedicated employee since 1986. And Mel can be found throughout the school day attending to any one of the many tasks that you could think of that would come his way as a custodian in a middle school. Um, if you know Mel, you already know of his dedication and his huge heart. He is kind, caring, um, so committed, and there is just no problem that he can't solve. He's always eager to lend a hand, uh, find a creative solution, and we are always sharing funny moments together, um, Mel and our, our whole staff. 
While Mel has worked in, I think, all the schools in Kings Park, his favorite memory is when he and Mr. Storch actually traded places after the kids at Parkview hit their reading goal. Mel told me that being principal for the day while watching Mr. Storch do um, his custodial duties was something he will always remember. That sounds so fun. <laughs> that must have been a great day. Um, at the middle school, we'll always remember um, Mel just for everything I've already said, but also for his um, amazing um, comp competitive edge in the pie eating contest when he first arrived here from uh, after leaving Parkview. That was really fun. We commemorated Pie Day with a pie eating contest and Mel jumped right in and volunteered. Um, it's a pleasure to work with Mel each day. He's one of the very first people that I get to see and we're really going to miss him dearly. Um, our staff and students will as well. Mel, I see you. I hope that you uh, really enjoy spending more time with your two grandchildren and really enjoy retirement. Thank you so much and congratulations. We have two more, Bridget Keenan, she retired um, last June. Bridget Keenan has been a dedicated member of the Kings Park family since 1987. Whether she was in a classroom, the gymnasium, or on the athletic fields, Ms. Keenan just always promoted literacy and personal improvement. Uh, she's always just been a role model for everybody around her, and I'm sure she still continues to be. As a teacher, she was a reflective practitioner, a true practitioner, um, who really reflected and, and just strove to always infuse new and innovative concepts into her instruction and how she worked with kids. Uh, she worked with passion and purpose, and she helped really create a supportive community in each one of her classrooms and spaces that she taught. Um, I love that Bridget always recognized when another person really needed an advocate and her work in fundraising always helped others. She was always a voice for those in need um, and it really enriched everybody's lives, the students around her, her colleagues and it really inspired, inspired each of us. So we miss you, Ms. Keenan. If you're out there, congrats on your retirement. And lastly, for the middle school, Kathy Seary. Uh, Kathy, it is a pleasure to speak about her tonight. I hope you're out there, Kathy. It's just been such a pleasure to work with you this year. Um, she's been a special education aide and a dedicated member of the Kings Park family since uh, 2002. And throughout her career with us, she has worked alongside so many students uh, in Fort Salonga, Parkview, RJO, um, and also here at the middle school. Mrs. Siri, if you haven't met her, she is one of the first to lend a hand to help a student or a colleague. She is funny, she's kind, so hardworking, such a true professional. Um, as an aide, she has been just so dedicated to supporting the work uh, of the classroom teachers that she works with. She helps each child to reach um, his or her potential. And she's works, like, as I said, alongside many. Uh, she's a professional, she's a role model, and she really has left a mark on so many students and their families uh, during her time here. So Mrs. Siri, we hope you enjoy the lake house and the new pontoon boat. And the next time, and all the time rather, you get to spend with your granddaughter. Congratulations, and we will really miss you in Kings Park and at WTR. And that is it for the middle school retirees. Thanks so much. Thank you, Dr. Moreno. Uh, next, we have uh, Mr. Massimo, uh, principal of RJO Intermediate, who will be recognizing uh, his retirees. Mr. Massimo. Thank you, Dr. Craig. Good evening. Congratulations to all the Kings Park retirees. Tonight's actually a very difficult task because I actually have to acknowledge the, retire the retirements of five of our family members. They became building blocks of what our school represents. Whether it was 33 years ago or 20 years ago, this group found their way to RJO. We've grown together, we've learned from each other, we depend on each other, and we simply care a great deal about each other. Our five retirees tonight are Denise Petrucci, Marie Irachi, Joan Hall, Kathy Cuff, and Robin Paola. I'm going to start with Denise. Uh, Denise Petrucci was our greeter at the main entrance. She was uh, with the district since 1999. She was the welcoming face that every student would see as they entered RJO. Her smile was contagious as she greeted our students and families. She supervised our children, kept them safe, and greeted each child by name. Parents loved her, so much so that you would see Denise walk out during the holidays with a lot of gifts. <laughs> she actually taught me how to sew, actually. <laughs> so thank you, Denise, for doing that. She retired last year and has truly been missed. So Denise, I know you're enjoying your family. Congratulations. The next person I'm going to recognize tonight is uh, Maria Arachi. She's been with us since 1996. She taught in a few of our buildings, but finally settled at RJO. Ms. Arachi is currently a fourth grade teacher and has been a mentor for many of our new teachers. 
She was recognized for her outstanding teaching and her ability to inspire, uh, inspire students and teachers. She, uh, she was nominated as the RGO Teacher of the Year in 2016. Highly requested by parents, well known in the community, very involved in the science programs at RGO and Fort Salonga. A student might even say that Miss Irachi makes the best waffles and ancient drinks they've ever had. She's been an amazing member of our RJO community and will truly be missed. Maria, congratulations. And just for the record, I do expect to see you at our science fairs. <laughs> we will get that banner. Joan Hall is probably the person I have known the longest in this district. As a parent in the district and a colleague, Joan has been a teacher in the district since 2000. She served in several roles at RJO, including grade five teacher, inclusion co-teacher, union representative, student council advisor, and history club advisor. I probably missed a few in there, Joan, I'm sorry. Joan was one of the staff members that embraced the new curriculum and has never stopped learning. Even in her last year, with all that technology, she's continued to update and implement new instruction. She is loved as a teacher, colleague, and as our friend. I know Joan is excited about this new stage in her life and the time she will spend with her family. Joan, we love you and congratulations. Kathy Cuff has been an RJO teacher since 1999 and has always been known for her high standards and professionalism. She was the teacher that everyone wanted. Kathy has always been the go-to person for the staff. She has provided all of us guidance as it relates to curriculum and instruction. Her dedication to her students has gone far beyond the classroom and is often seen around the community and at various events, including her students' baseball games. One of the things I love about Kathy is that she implemented this great project where her fourth grade students write a letter to their future selves, the graduating senior. This year's class of 2021 will be receiving their letters sh shortly. How cool is that? Kathy, enjoy every day with your growing family. We love you and we're going to miss you. Congratulations. Next person I wanna recognize is Robin Paola. The best way to describe Robin is by calling her the Pied Piper for children. Robin has been a Kings Park music teacher since 1988. Wherever she goes on, Wherever she goes, no matter where, what the venue is, Robin is faced with prior students sharing with her how they were inspired by her teaching, her talent, and her love for them. Her introduction at any event fosters shouts and cheers from the audience. When someone enters her classroom, they usually leave with a smile. Parents come to concerts to see their children sing in the chorus, but the focus usually turns on her, on the energy she puts out to conduct her group as she dances and laughs with her children. She is responsible for the largest choruses at RJO. She has written and directed the RJO musicals, provides voice lessons, had the largest NISMA participation we've seen at RJO. The list goes on. Ms. Paola, no one can ever replace you. Congratulations to you. How lucky we are, all of us, to have something that makes saying goodbye so hard. On behalf of the RJO community, our family, we congratulate you on this new chapter of your lives. We will miss you all. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Massimo. Uh, next, we have uh, Mr. Kevin Storch, uh, principal of Parkview Elementary, who will be speaking on behalf of his retirees. Mr. Storch. Thank you, Dr. Craig. Um, first, I'd like to say uh, thank you to uh, Dr. Moreno. Uh, and I just want to say, Mr. Mel, Mr. Mel, what, what a great guy, and Ms. Uh, Mel, and congratulations, Mel, on your retirement. Um, I'd like to start off and just say it's my privilege to share and to celebrate the careers of several Parkview teachers and staff this evening. Uh, at Parkview, the relationships and bonds that we form with one another over time 
are really reminiscent of family. Uh, we work hard, we share ideas, we collaborate, we laugh, and sometimes we cry together. When we learn that one of us is retiring, it's met with mixed emotions. Uh, we're certainly happy for our colleague as they enter the next stage of their life, but we also know that we will miss them terribly as we remember our time together. So congratulations to each of the Parfew uh, retirees uh, this evening. And uh, I want you to know that because you're a part of the family, you are always welcome to come back and visit us at Parkview. I'd like to begin with uh, Mary Castellano. Mary has taught in Kings Park for the last 18 years. She is currently a third grade general education teacher in an ICT classroom. During the past seven years that I've known Mary, I've admired her professionalism, her common sense approach to instruction, and her willingness to learn and collaborate with others. The team of Castellano Freund has really been a partnership that all of us could really count on for years. And I thank both of you for, you for your dedication. Mary has taken on a new role in her retirement of grandmother. So congratulations to Mary and her retirement and her new position as grandmother. Next, I'd like to recognize Ann Ochenpente. Anne has been an IT aide within Kings Park for the last 21 years. As technology has continued to evolve over those years, Anne has maintained her effectiveness as the school's primary troubleshooter and problem solver. The phrase has been, call ATT if you need help. That means, and it stands for Anne Ticket Tech. So if you're a teacher or someone at Parkview and you need something that's uh, not working in terms of tech and technology, you call ATT. Also, Anne has been an important part of our PVTV broadcast, which somehow goes on each day uh, as a result of her incredible efforts. We will miss Anne, her endless stories, smiles, and all of the incredible laughs that she brings us. Congratulations, Anne. Next, I'd like to recognize Mrs. Karen Tully. For 24 years, Mrs. Tully inspired students at RJO, Fort Salonga, and finally Parkview. She ended her career as a member of the second grade team. Mrs. Tully was the 2019 Parkview Teacher of the Year. Upon visiting Mrs. Tully's classroom, it was oftentimes difficult to determine who was more excited about the lesson and the learning. Was it Mrs. Tully? or was it the students? Mrs. Tully's favorite subject was science. And she often referred to her students as scientists. None of us at Parkview to this day can speak of science without thinking of Mrs. Tully. Mrs. Tully, you are welcome to visit us at Parkview anytime. And from now on, we will refer to you as scientist Tully. Congratulations, Mrs. Tully. Next, I'd like to recognize uh, Mrs. Sharon Donenfeld. Mrs. Donenfeld had an amazing career which spanned 40 years within the Kings Park School District. She served as a school psychologist at several buildings, including San Remo, Fort Salonga, the high school, and finally Parkview. We, we miss Sharon's tremendous knowledge, her experience, of special education and, and the laughs and smiles that she would bring us. All of us at Parfu wish the greatest happiness in your retirement. Congratulations, Sharon. Next, I'd like to recognize Meryl Master Cinque. Meryl served, as a, at, served the students of Kings Park for 19 years as speech therapist at both Fort Salonga and Parfu. Meryl's love and dedication of her students was admirable. She was always willing to take an extra step necessary to meet the students' needs. Meryl would regularly rearrange her schedule if she thought it was going to miss a group, she was going to miss a group due to a meeting or an absence. Meryl's kind and gracious manner was endearing to her students and parents. Congratulations, Meryl, and we wish you much joy and happiness in your retirement. Finally, I'd like to recognize Mr. John Paz. John retired from Kings Park in January of 2020. 
He served as a Kings Park, uh, the Parkview head custodian during a difficult yet exciting time at Parkview. John led his team through the bond work reconstruction, which impacted most of the first floor classrooms, as well as the parking lots, blacktops, and boilers in the building. His leadership made for a smooth re-entry into the building for teachers and students at the last minute. Uh, John took tremendous pride in his work and the cleanliness of Parkview. For this, we are tremendously grateful. We wish you the best of luck in your retirement, John, and go Yankees. On behalf of the Parkview teachers and staff, we wish all of our retirees a great retirement and congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Craig. Thank you, uh, Mr. Storch. Uh, next, I'd like to introduce uh, Ms. Monte Cavo, principal of Fort Salonga Elementary, who will be recognizing her retirees. Ms. Monte Cavo. Thank you, Dr. Craig. Good evening, everyone. Congratulations to all of our Kings Park retirees, many of whom I had the pleasure of working with for uh, near 30 years at this point. So I wish you all the best of luck and, and much love and um, just sending Kindness and joy to all of you uh, in your new lives. Uh, the first recipient I'd like to recognize is Mrs. Annette McHale. Annette has been a dedicated classroom assistant serving the needs of our students with special needs in the Kings Park School District for the past 23 years. She worked at William T. Rogers for the last, for 15 years in the inclusion program before moving to Fort Salonga, where she has been essential in providing small group instruction and support to our students in the self-contained classroom. Throughout her time here in Kings Park, Annette has exuded kindness, patience, and a great sense of humor, making well-loved and respected and making everyone love and respect her and uh, just more than loved by her colleagues and, and of course her students. Although she will be greatly missed here, we know that Annette is looking forward to spending time with her beautiful family. We wish her all the best. My, my second and last recipient this evening is Mrs. Annie Achapinti. Annie, of course, is affectionately known as Annie O at both Fort Salonga and Parkview Elementary Schools, where she splits her, her days. She's been employed at Kings Park Schools since September of 2000, and I had the good fortune of first meeting Annie as a parent, having had her children as students at the Kings Park High School. And later, she became a former a colleague uh, and friend. Annie represents all things related to technology. She, as mentioned before, she splits her time between the K3 buildings. And when there is a problem that arises, she is quick to respond to either a teacher or a staff member in need and does so with a smile. Annie, enjoy your retirement, your family, and your new grandbaby. We will miss you and, and don't forget about us. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Monticavo. Uh, next, we have uh, Mr. Steve Lee, our transportation supervisor, and Mr. Lee will be recognizing our transportation employees. All right, thank you, Dr. Craig. Um, I'd like, like to extend my congratulations to all, all the others who are retiring. Um, the trans transportation department is, is really um, like a separate entity. You know, it's, it's like a whole different family um, than, than all the teachers. Um, one of the disadvantages that, that, that I have um, in transportation is I see them in the morning, then I don't see them until the afternoon when they sign in again. Um, but there are times where I have drivers who come in and we have a little chat and everything like that. Um, and, and it makes a, a, a well-meaning time um, for it. Like Rich Lasner, um, who retired last June, he's been with the district since 1998. So he has 23 years of experience uh, driving that school bus. And he's also a union president um, for the past uh, 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 quite a number of years, <laughs> actually. Um, and, and he and he does his job with zeal. You know, he, he likes to um, make sure that um, the children are home safe, they're, they're picked up on time. And um, so he, he, he's been really reliable for, for me in the transportation department. Uh, so I like to congratulate him on, on, on his uh, retirement. Um, I know he's in New Hampshire now. Um, and so, you know, whenever you get the chance, no rush, you can always come back and, and uh, give us a visit, you know, maybe not on a weekend, but on a weekday when, when we're open. Um, the next I'd like to recognize is Susan Mullane. Uh, out of all my drivers, 
she actually has been there the longest, uh, 33 years. Uh, she's been there since 1988. Um, her, her long service record shows her dedication to the students of Kings Park. Uh, she, actually, uh, she's been there so long, she actually knows how these routes are going. She knows every inch of the district. There is no student that she cannot take home. If I needed someone in a crunch who needs to be picked up or they got that left behind or something like that, so she, she would always, uh, you know, if I ask her, she'll, she'll go get the student and then take them where they need to go. Uh, so she's very reliable uh, like that. Uh, last year during the, pan uh, dur during the uh, pandemic, she's actually offered some very valuable suggestions um, to help us with the routing, being shorthanded uh, as we were um, well, for the past few years. So that was a very valuable help uh, uh, that she had offered. So I, I really thank Sue Mullane for really uh, stepping up at that point. And I also congratulate her on, on her retirement so that she can enjoy time with her family. Uh, next I recognize is Marilyn Sabella. She's a driver assistant uh, for the transportation and she's been there uh, since 1999. So that's 22 years of service for her. Um, she's very vers uh, versatile in, in the things that she can do uh, with special needs. Um, she will go wherever she, we, we ask her to do and uh, switch routes uh, at, at moment's notice if, if need be. So we, we thank her for, for her service. Um, next, I'd like to, to recognize Peter Scott. He's been driving for the transportation department since the year 2000. Uh, so that's 21 years of experience. He's always been reliable. He's a great driver. He's very analytical uh, in, in, in what he does. Um, if there's a student that normally has a parent waiting there and, and, uh, and there's no parent there for one reason, he always calls it in to let me know. Um, he really cares about the safety of the students. He really cares about, you know, uh, if there's anything amiss that he would always bring it up. The one thing that I am going to miss about uh, uh, Peter retiring is I won't be seeing any of his yearly suggestions and how to, you know, improve the yard or, or if there's a problem at the school with, with the bus slots and everything like that. Um, uh, I'll, I'll miss that because I, I really enjoy talking to Peter when I get a chance. Uh, he's always been great about volunteering for stuff a bus to bring a bus over to, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the supermarket over there by Key Food and, um, you know, and uh, to, to really help the community in, in, in uh, delivering the food and whatnot. Uh, Lawrence Russo, I like to recognize. He's been a bus driver for us for since 2002. And that's 20 years. Um, his concern for the students he transports is, I, I like to say, remarkable. Um, for the past uh, few years, he's, he's been uh, driving a, a van uh, for special needs, and he really keeps an eye out for his students. He really cares about them. Um, uh, prior to the pandemic, he became a grandfather, so congratulations, Larry, on, on uh, becoming a grandfather. Uh, I'm really going to miss Larry. Um, he, he's like a very special kind of person, you know. He's uh, I, every time you look at him, I, I kind of look at him like a like a like grandfatherly figure. You know, I, I every time I see him, it always brings a smile to my face because I know that the students that he transports, they're in good hands. They're in good hands, and I like to congratulate all all my transportation department, uh, those who are retiring. I'm really going to miss you all, um, and and it's a shame that you know uh, my, my that my time has come. So. Uh, uh, I really hope that um, one day we, we can all meet again. We can all meet again. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Lee. And, and before we conclude, I would like to take a moment to recognize Mr. Lee, uh, who is also retiring uh, this August. Uh, Mr. Lee, as you know, is our transportation supervisor. Uh, he has been with the district since 2011. You know, as noted, you know, our students are beginning and end their day with our transportation employees. It's critical to get our students to school safely. They get them home to their family safely. Uh, Mr. Lee is the man behind the scenes who does all the routing uh, that makes the whole operation run. Uh, and my working with him when we've had emergency situations uh, such as accidents, uh, he's the first man on the scene uh, making sure our students are safe. Uh, that our bus drivers are safe and working with the authorities. Uh, in addition, during Mr. Lee's time, uh, he has uh, been a part of uh, hiring and recruiting our bus drivers, uh, getting them trained, 
and certainly helping mentor them as well. Uh, on a personal note, uh, Mr. Lee uh, has a wonderful sense of humor. Uh, he'll be missed at our holiday luncheon where he's often the hit of the party. Uh, he's uh, been a pleasure to work with. I will certainly miss him and I'm very happy he's staying on through August. Uh, with his dedication, he'll be staying with us to wrap for the next school year and leave us in good shape as he moves on uh, to the next phase of his life. And uh, certainly, Mr. Lee, I wish you all the happiness in your retirement as well, and thank you. Uh, so uh, that concludes our retirement recognition. Uh, so certainly on my behalf, I wish all our retirees uh, health and happiness, and I will hand it back to the Board of Education at this point. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Craig. Um, that was just amazing, the amazing careers all of the people recognized tonight. Um, Board of Education appreciates everything that you have contributed to our school district and we wish you the best of luck in everything that you do in retirement. This is a long and healthy and happy retirement. Thank you for everything you've done to contribute to this school district. Yeah, I, I would just echo that. I mean, so many of you that, that I've come in contact with over the years just Hearing about your careers brings back a lot of memories for uh, for me individually, for my family, and then to hear about so many others and all of your contributions to the district and making things possible for kids. Um, it's tremendous. I think Kevin was maybe doing better math than me because I missed a couple. I, I tallied somewhere over 700 years of experience and contribution to the Kings Park School District. Uh, it's just amazing. Uh, the work and effort and dedication that you've all put in and, and what we're what we're missing and losing. Um, so thank you to all of you uh, and best of luck and enjoy your time. I would also like to say thank you. Um, you are all the reasons why Kings Park District um, is the way it is. Um, hopefully all the everyone has learned from you has been inspired by you. Um, not only our students, but other colleagues. And um, I too wish you the best of luck in retirement and thank you for all your service. Yeah. As everybody said, best wishes in retirement. Uh, I never say goodbye. I keep it till, uh, until we meet again. So if you're ever in hardware, Home Depot, drop by and see me, loose nuts and screws or down there. Uh, but uh, uh, for all the names I've mentioned, though, uh, a lot of memories. I taught a lot of your children, and I got to meet a lot of you through uh, uh, meetings, and some of you taught my children. So thank you very much. Thank you again. Next, we are going to have Mr. Um, yeah, you know what? If I could, I would like to thank everyone for such a very nice uh, meeting. It was uh, excellent that the board and the superintendent took the time to do this for all of the members of the district. I compliment you on this process. You did just a wonderful job. And I know all of the retirees are very appreciative. Of it. Thank you. And thank you very much for this. The school board, thank you very much. Extremely appreciated. Have a good evening. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, All right, so we will move on to um, the American Recovery Plan funding. Um, Dr. Egan. Okay, if you give me two seconds, I am sharing my screen. Okay, good evening everybody and, uh, and welcome. I'm gonna talk a little bit this evening about the American Rescue Plan Act funding. Uh, we had mentioned this uh, a few times throughout the budget process. And many of us may recall that back on March 11th, President Joe Biden signed into law a stimulus package about $1.9 trillion for uh, the United States, New York was allocated approximately $9 billion. And as we mentioned a few times through the budget process, the Kings Park Central School District was slated to get about a million dollars. Our final 
allocation is $1,081,532. And those funds are available for the school district for three years through September 30th, 2024. The application process is, is not too complicated. It, it's a two part process. Uh, the first part required that school districts complete a number of signed assurances. Um, I did get a few questions regarding uh, what were in those signed assurances, they are published to the website. Uh, you will find everything that I'm referring to and talking about this evening, including this PowerPoint presentation, will be saved to the website. It's in the, the budget section. There's a separate tab for um, federal stimulus funds. I, I believe it's called ARP ESSER, and uh, you will see those, those assurances uh, right there. The second part of the application process uh, must be completed at a, a date yet to be determined. It'll probably be this summer, um, and that will be a submission most likely through the New York State Business Portal. School districts that receive ARP ESSA funding are required to do two important things. One of which is to develop a plan for safe return to in-person instruction. Uh, we, we obviously have already done that. Um, all of our students are currently uh, being offered in-person instruction. Uh, we will need to update that plan as, as we do move forward. Um, and that plan will be continue to be posted to our website. And the second thing that all school districts need to do is to develop a plan for the use of these funds with public input and consultation with stakeholders. Um, part of that requirement is this evening's presentation. Uh, we will be taking public comment and input for the next two weeks as we move forward to the June 22nd Board of Education meeting. Um, I have already consulted with um, a couple of school district groups, including our council of schools and our administrators, and I will be consulting with, with some other groups uh, before the end of the school year. Um, the plan does need to be publicly posted to the website by July 1st, and again, that, that plan, the, the written part of it, should be posted later this week, and uh, again, you'll find that in that tab within the business office on the website. For these ARP ESSA funds, there are um, about eight or nine areas where um, the money can be expended. We are supposed to prioritize spending in non-reoccurring expenses. Um, and when you do read the written plan, you'll, you'll see that that is stressed, non-reoccurring -re expenses. We chose to focus on three of those bullet points. The first one being the social, emotional, and mental health and academic needs of our students. Um, with those funds, we will be funding a social worker, a fifth social worker that we talked about a, a little bit through the budget process and alluded to the fact that we might be using these funds for that, for that purpose. This will give us a dedicated social worker in each of our five buildings. That ruler program that uh, we, we presented at a previous meeting, it's a Yale University um, program, and that's a mental health program that'll, that'll take us two years to, to walk through and get trained on and implement. And last but not least, writing and math centers, both at the middle school and the high school. The next area of focus is summer work. We're going to be funding our ELA and math summer program, uh, K-8. We have about 200 students currently enrolled in that program, and that's to fill whatever learning gaps might have uh, accumulated or come to be during the pandemic. It's a 25-day program this coming summer, and that would be paid for in entirety through, through this federal money. Uh, and also, a jumpstart program. It's uh, 
students at the high school who would take algebra two in the fall, those students took algebra one uh, last year, which we, we know we finished the school year on full remote. So we want to make sure that we offer those, those students um, towards the end of the summer, a little bit of support as they're maybe filling some learning gaps in algebra one before they enter algebra two. And last but not least, we, we want to propose that we use some of those federal funds to purchase some educational technology. We have a number of high volume printers, um, copy machines slash printers that we have in, in this grant and also um, flat panel display boards that will replace our smart boards in our classrooms and some other instructional spaces around the district that are slowly becoming um, obsolete and or um, are no longer usable. So we look at our, our budget over three years and you'll, you'll see the, the first grouping is, is year one, which again would fund our, our summer work this summer, that elementary social worker, all of the math centers at William T and the high school, the ruler program, and approximately 20 uh, flat panel display boards and high volume printers. Year two, we would continue to support the elementary social worker, the ruler program. Uh, we would still support the, the learning centers at the high school. We would reevaluate the learning centers at the middle school. If we feel that we want to continue them going, they would get absorbed into the general fund and we would support them through the school district budget. And we have some additional flat panels in year two. And then year three, we continue to fund that social worker on the elementary level. We see one dedicated social worker in each building. Um, we still have the high school writing center that would be supported in the grant. Um, we would again reevaluate and either pull the other writing centers into the general, the general fund um, or they would be discontinued. And then again, some additional flat panel display boards for instruction <laughs> technology. And I believe that is the end of the presentation. For the world here in better ways. Michelin, motion for life. Doug, so then I said. Okay, and again, this, this presentation, along with the written plan, will be posted to the school district website. Uh, we will be taking comments uh, through June 22nd, at which time I will propose a, a final plan for Board of Education, which will need to get posted to the district website um, as final by July 1st. Thank you, Jackie. So at this time, we will hear public comments uh, on tonight's Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, we have the annual review of code of conduct. So, Dr. Partizan. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Nally. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm just going to share my screen. Okay, so once a year, uh, we review our code of conduct, and this is typically done with our district-wide discipline committee, uh, which is made up of students, um, faculty, support staff, um, and usually get some parent input as well. Um, this year, we met on April 15th, uh, 
a combination of in person at the high school with some students and, and administrators, and the rest was done uh, through Zoom and Google Meet, um, where we had students participate from each of the buildings. And we took a look at the code of conduct. Uh, we looked at some of the things we learned uh, this year with our hybrid model, with uh, students who were fully remote, and we received recommendations from all members uh, to make some minor changes uh, and recommendations for the Board of Education. And this just really reflects that once a year, uh, we typically do this as part of our board policy, uh, looking at the code of conduct. And a couple of areas that the committee focused on was adding for number one, uh, A block, when we look at our different levels, and I'll show you this in just a minute in our chart, our guideline chart, uh, we added A block where it had seminar, we wanted to include the A block for the middle school. In level two, we added where it says inappropriate, and level three, repeated inappropriate use of Chromebooks was added. Um, and again, that was a big change because of the fact that we did a one-to-one -one initiative for Chromebooks in all students now in grades uh, six through 12. In level two, uh, the classroom environment, instead of just saying the classroom, one of our students recommended classroom environment, and that would include any student who was remote or hybrid. Uh, it would just broaden the definition. Um, and that would be any off task or disruptive behavior. And age, the age appropriate code of conduct, we have an age appropriate code of conduct for students in grades K through five. And the recommendations there were under the section of clothing that shouldn't be worn, uh, backless sandals, slides, open toe shoes for safety and spaghetti straps. Under the bus safety section, um, it was recommended that we add throwing anything inside or outside of the bus. Our school attorney who's here this evening had reviewed these recommendations from the committee and now they're in draft form uh, to share with you uh, as members of the Board of Education. You can see here it's highlighted. You can see the four levels going across and the highlights will show you where the additions are. And these are guidelines and it's important to note that principals use these as guidelines but they make the final determination within the building as far as school discipline, student discipline. So this is just guidelines to share with, with students and parents. Obviously, every situation is looked at uh, individually, uh, but this gives students an idea of the levels of infractions, the seriousness of them, and what the possible dispositions can be. Here's the K-5 um, student-friendly code of conduct for that's age appropriate for them. And you can see the highlighted um, comments or where the additions are. The next steps obviously is tonight. We typically do this as the first reading. The second reading will be our next board meeting on the 22nd of June. And if the board approves these suggestions and recommendations, they will become updated in our guidelines and be sent out in our school calendar, which typically gets mailed out uh, in August to uh, all members of the community. And those are the updates for the code of conduct this evening. Thank you, Dr. I don't I, I would actually go back to the American Public Health funding for moment and thank Dr. Williams for putting that together. I think uh, both in terms of the, some of the immediate needs and addressing those those students this summer um, and into next school year, but also understanding that we didn't get into this situation overnight. It's been over the course of the last 15, 16 months. It's going to take time and so having a plan that uses the money over three years. Uh, to continue to provide those support services, I think is a good balance. Um, and, and we can see that we're getting started as soon as possible. There may be places we need to get feedback as we go through and, and make adjustments as we have throughout the last year. Um, and know that we have resources for the next few years to, to address it. Great. Thank you. Board of Education will hear public comments to address voting items on tonight's agenda only at this time. Speakers must state their first and last names to the clerk and address their comments to the board. Comments by any individual may not exceed three minutes. A visible timer will be used to monitor this timing. The public comment exceptions for this meeting will not exceed 30 minutes in total. Fairness to all speakers who exceed the three minute limit and do 
not finish my ask and have your microphone muted. Due to confidentiality concerns, the board does not permit speakers to raise issues concerning a specific student or a specific personnel matter. Such concerns should be presented to the superintendent after the board meeting. So if we have anyone with a comment or a question pertaining to items on our voting agenda, please raise your hand. I am not seeing anyone. So we will move on to the approval of confidential student settlement agreement. This is a confidential student settlement agreement that arose from a due process hearing resolution meeting. Typically at the first board meeting following the, the budget cycle, um, we put this on the agenda. I just want to personally thank the community for supporting our budget for 1,458 votes for and 642 votes against. Uh, so it, it passed uh, considerably, which is great. Um, in addition, Kevin Johnston received 1,169 votes and Diane Malley 1,102 votes. So both incumbents were re-elected to the school board. Good evening. Um, highlights of our personnel schedule this evening. Uh, first, uh, we do have the appointment of our new high school principal, uh, Dr. Karen Lessler. Uh, Dr. Lessler has been with the school district since 2002. Uh, she has worked as a social studies teacher at William T. Rogers Middle School. Uh, for the past three years, she has worked as an assistant principal at Kings Park High School. Uh, Dr. Lessler has served as a teacher leader uh, she's done an outstanding job with the high school, uh, communicating with staff and students and working on curriculum as well. So certainly a very happy uh, to recommend the appointment of Dr. Karen Lessler as Kings Park High School. Congratulations, Dr. Lessler. Thank you, Dr. Craig. Thank you, everyone. Just a few other items of note on the personnel schedule. We do have the appointment of uh, teachers and non-instructional staff for our extended school year program. Uh, that is the program for our 12 month uh, special education students and also our summer support program. Uh, that is our voluntary program for students this summer uh, for grades uh, K through eight. And those are the highlights of the personnel schedule for this evening. Thank you, Dr. Craig. Um, I would like to first thank Ms. Hunter for coming to the our high school. And I would like to congratulate Dr. Lutzler and we are looking forward to her tenure as the high school principal. Um, I would make a motion to approve. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Resolved that the Board of Education accepts the record. I'm sorry. Next is. Um, New business voting finance, acceptance of recommendations to verify the vendors to include district vendor list. As per district policy, all vendors must be approved by the board before any payment can be made. I will make a motion to approve. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.
those in favor? Aye. Next is tax anticipation note resolution of Kingsport Central School District. Um, this is Mia. Good evening. This resolution authorizes the issuance of tax anticipation notes for the 2021-2022 fiscal year in the amount not to exceed $19 million. A tax anticipation note is required because in Suffolk County, we don't receive our property tax monies until January. Thus, a TAN is needed for our cash flow purposes. In the next two months, the treasurer will be completing her cash flow analysis to determine the exact amount of borrowing, which will not exceed $19 million. Thank you, Mrs. Mayor. Uh, has everyone had the opportunity to read the resolution? Yeah. Okay, then I will make a motion to approve. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Resolved by the Board of Education of Kingsport Central School District in the County of Suffolk, New York, as follows. Next is the acceptance of recommendation to award bids for the 2021-2022 school year. Mrs. Mayor. Thank you. This resolution will be the acceptance of in-district bids, including bids for athletics, custodial, transportation, and physical education. Business office conducts the bid openings, logs all the prices and specifications received in a spreadsheet, analyzes the costs and specifications with respect to each department and to identify the lowest responsible bidder for each item. It's a very involved process and Sierra Rosa takes the lead on this annual project. She does a great job and her efforts are appreciated and the district benefits with the best possible prices. Thank you. Um, are there any questions from the board? I will make a motion to approve. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I would just say they and again thank you to the business office yeah. for, for all of their diligence and hard work, uh, including areas like this that I just said to get us uh, the best possible price. Yes. Thank you. That's good. Yeah. Um, okay. So, whereas the Kings Park Central School District Board of Education bidding policy complies with Section 103 of General Municipal Law, now therefore be it resolved that the Board of Education awards the following bids. 2021-2022 school year to the lowest responsible bidders per the attached documentation. Custodial maintenance supplies, total award $118,653.11. Physical education supplies, total award $16,194.94. Athletic supplies and equipment, total award $87,000. $857.02, automatic transmission rebuilding, total award as required, and fleet parts, total award as required. Next is approval of amendment number three to extend the general refuse, waste dumpsters, and cardboard recycling dumpsters bid awarded to National Waste Services, LLC, for the 2018-2019 school year to June 30th, 2022. Mrs. Meehan. Thank you. Yes, this resolution authorizes the extension of the district's bid awarded to National Waste Services for refuse and recycling services for the 21-22 school year at no increase. Thank you, Mrs. Meehan. Yeah. We always like to hear no increase. Um, are there any questions from the board? I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Resolved that the refuse, waste, dumpsters, and cardboard recycling dumpsters bid awarded by the Board of Education to National Waste Services, LLC, on June 5th, 2018, for the 2018-2019 school year be extended to the 2021-2022 school year to June 30th, 2022, at no increase in costs. Next is authorization to transfer funds for out-of-district contract transportation. Mrs. Meehan. Thank you. This resolution will authorize a budget transfer necessary to cover unanticipated student transportation runs for out-of-district placements this year. Um, different needs come up throughout the year um, from September to June with respect to the number of runs and bus matrons needed. So this transfer will cover our expenses through the rest of the year. 
make a motion to approve. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Resolved. The Board of Education authorizes the following transfer listed below to cover out of district contract transportation expenses through June 30th, 2021. Next is authorization to transfer funds to established district reserves. This is me. Thank you. Yes, annually, the district provides the Board of Education with a resolution that upon passage authorizes fund balance monies to be transferred into specific reserve accounts at the end of the fiscal year. This resolution authorizes an amount that is not to exceed amount. Um, and it's prudent practice as certain accounting entries for or unforeseen events may occur at the end of June, early July. Um, that alter the district's fund balance. And a subsequent resolution is always presented in the fall detailing the actual amounts transferred to the reserve accounts. Thank you, Mrs. Mann. Any questions from the board? I'll make a motion to approve. All those in favor? Aye. Whereas by action of the Board of Education, the Kings Park Central School District has previously established certain reserves and Whereas the Kings Park Central School District wishes to maintain these reserves as close to fully funded as possible. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Education authorizes transfers up to the amounts listed below from the 2020 2021 unassigned general fund balance into the previously established reserves as listed below. Next disposal of June 9, 2020 election materials. As per district policy, all disposals must be approved by the board. I will make a motion to approve. I'll second. All those in favor? All right. The district clerk is requesting authorization to dispose all of the ballots, cast, spoiled, unused, absentee, et cetera, in the June 9, 2020 annual district budget vote and board of, elect uh, board of education election. Comment, please. Yes. Yeah, I, I just like to thank uh, Mrs. Patty Capabianco and the election staff for all the hard work that they put in. That was a long, long day, uh, especially for conducting such a legal and legitimate election. Thank you. And I would like to add to that, to Mrs. Johnson. It's not just the day of the vote, it's everything leading up to it. Um, a lot of work goes on before we everything prepared. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, we're up to new business voting people personnel, authorization to sign contracts with service providers. Back to Colby Lenny. So the, the, the agreements presented this evening will allow for the provision of program services for students with disabilities. Uh, please be advised the contracts are inclusive of previous school years. This is a result in a delay of obtaining the 2019-20 contract due to the emergency closure. Thank you, Dr. Colby. Any questions from the board? I make a motion to approve. I'll All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Be it resolved that the Board of Education hereby gives the board president permission to sign the attached contracts with the following service providers for 2019, 2020, and the 2020, 2021 school years. Harmony Heights, 2019, 2020, and then Harmony Heights to 2020-2021. Um, acceptance of CSE meeting recommendations, Dr. Colby Green. Thank you, Ms. Nally. The following will include minutes from 119 Committee on Special Education meetings that were held between the dates of January 6th through June 3rd. I'll make a motion to approve. All those in favor? Aye. The Board of Education approves the attached resolve that the Board of Education approves the attached individualized educational program, IEPs, from January 6, 2021 to June 3, 2021, 119 in total. Mrs. Nally Bonnet? Yes. Okay, just like to thank Dr. Colby Rooney again. I know it said it before, but 119 uh, total CSEs. Uh, that's a lot, especially in these uh, very, very difficult trying times. But thank you. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Um, 
next order authorization to add organizations to require distribution list for the 2020 2021 school year. As per district policy, all flyers must be approved by the board for email distribution. I'll make a motion to approve. All those in favor? Aye. Resolve that the organization listed below receive approval by the Board of Education to be included in email distribution of flyers in the school district for the 2020-2021 school year. 2021 Children's Summer Reading Club. The next is authorization, authorization to approve German foreign exchange students for 2021 2022 school year. Back to begin. Okay, from time to time, we do get requests for foreign exchange students. Obviously, we did not um, approve any requests in the last year and a half, uh, but we did get a request from a company that we have worked with before to place a German foreign exchange student. And with a family here in Kings Park. The student, again, coming from Germany, um, her first name is Tavia. Uh, she's a very good student. She, um, she will be a junior at Kings Park High School next year. Uh, she speaks uh, a couple of different languages, has very good grades, does not require any um, special need attention or anything of that nature. Um, so she fits into the profile that we have approved in the past. And not only does it, it uh, serve for a good experience for her and the host family, but also for other students at Prince Park High School who get to interact with a student from another country in this case, Thank you, Dr. Regan. Um, are there any questions from the board? Uh, Mr. Regan, Paul, 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 Absolutely. Okay, I would like to make a motion to approve. One second. All those in favor? Aye. Resolve that the Board of Education approves the hosting of a German foreign exchange student in the district for 2021 2022 school year. Next is the abolishment of the, of the position of administrator for pupil personnel services, Dr. Ethan. I am recommending to the board this evening that we abolish the current title of administrator for people personnel services and appoint the individual who is currently serving in that capacity as assistant superintendent for people personnel services. Um, Dr. Colby Rooney has been a loyal member of the Kings Park Administrative Family for many years. She's also one of my direct assistants for people personnel. Uh, but the only one of the four without the title of assistant superintendent. So I am recommending that this evening, uh, please know that there is no additional compensation or changes to benefits or um, any compensation connected with this. It's simply a title change that I believe is well deserved. Thank you, Dr. Any questions from the board? Any questions from the board? I agree that it is very well deserved. Um, I guess I'm Dr. Eden, this is consistent with the title of the position of the district for the long term. Absolutely. Thank you. I will make a motion to approve. One second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Whereas the COVID 19 pandemic has forced the district to review various protocols, including chain of command and superintendent's cabinet titles, and whereas it is both typical and important to delineate specific administrators that serve in the superintendent's cabinet, and whereas the superintendent of schools have made a recommendation for the creation of the position of assistant superintendent of personnel services, and whereas the Board of Education has determined that it is in the best interest of the school district to effectuate the recommendation of the superintendent of schools. Now, therefore, be it resolved the board herewith abolishes the position of administrator for pupil personnel services effective to close of business June 8, 2021. The incumbent of the position administrator for pupil personnel services, Dr. Daniel Colby Rooney, shall be and hereby is appointed to the position of assistant superintendent for pupil personnel services effective June 9, 2021. 
connection with the foregoing, the Board of Education has determined that 50% or more of the duties of Dr. Kobe Miller's current position of Administrative and People Personnel Services is included within the job duties of the position Assistant Superintendent for People Personnel Service. Therefore, based on the education law of the state of New York, the incumbent of the position of Administrative and People Personnel Services is entitled to the appointment effective June 9, 2021, to the position of Assistant Superintendent for People Personnel Services. Further, based upon past meritorious service of Dr. Kobe Rumi, she shall be appointed with tenure to the position of Assistant Superintendent for People Personnel Services and shall carry all of the seniority and fringe benefits accumulated in the position of Administrator for People Personnel Services. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we're up to special reports and announcements from the superintendent. Okay. Good evening, everybody. A um, cu couple of uh, important announcements. Number one, as you probably know, we're, we're in the midst of our end of the year award season. We've been able to engineer just about every event that we would typically run this time of year. Uh, some may just need to look a little different than they have in, in typical years. It's a continuum with some events being recorded and wherever we can trying to do an in-person with a live streaming option. So for example, last night, we had a lovely senior awards night, which was held out on the King Park High School field in the bleachers. Uh, in person, we had 94 seniors, 207 awards, and a little over $124,000 in awards that were given out. Uh, it was a great night. Congratulations to our seniors. Thank you to all our donors for all that scholarship money, most of which is, is locally donated. Uh, thank you for our, our families as, as we look to navigate this event and other events. Uh, we do need to reduce attendance for some of our events to make sure that we, we stay under certain, certain maximum numbers. Um, and like last night, we, we will uh, be instituting uh, family pods at some events to keep family members together. And again, remember that outside masks are optional, inside masks are required. Uh, our families have been super respectful of, of our um, procedures and, and we, uh, we appreciate that. So thank you very much. As I mentioned this earlier this summer, we have a K-8 student support program. It has a math component, it has an ELA component, it has a social emotional component. Right now we have about 200 students that are currently registered for that, which, which is great. And we're looking forward to getting that up and running. And, and special thanks to Dr. Cartesano and also Dr. Kobe Rooney, who have been working super hard behind the scenes to recruit teachers and make sure we have that fully staffed with Dr. Craig. I want to uh, point out and thank uh, a couple of organizations. Over the month of May, we were able to assist with about 200 vaccinations for senior citizens in the town of Smithtown, some of our employees and some of our students who are age 16 and older. Special thanks to the town of Smithtown, also the town of Smithtown Senior Center, Rite Aid, Walmart, and our um, National Honor Society students at the high school who volunteered to assist and the KB High School uh, custodial staff who was able to help us uh, set up, which was a very specific setup that we needed. And last but not least, the Kings Park Fire Department because we needed emerg emergency medical either on site or on call for those events. Um, I do not anticipate that we're gonna be doing any additional vaccinations on site. Um, I know some, some districts are doing that. Um, at this point, I just don't see the need uh, we, we do have um, vaccine that is readily available through physicians and, and uh, pediatricians and other means. So um, 
I am happy that we were able to, to offer that for our seniors and our employees and our students. Um, I got an exciting email last Friday that a DASNY municipal grant uh, which we had applied for a little over two years ago and was, was stuck up in Albany. Uh, we have been given the, the approval and the go ahead with that grant. Um, it's $50,000, which we had applied for for field renovations at the high school. So I am hopeful that we're going to get that final approval and that money should be received and we might be able to get those field renovations started uh, in the fall so that they're ready for uh, our spring sports seasons as they would impact our, our ball fields. On Saturday, June 19th, we are finally going to be able to dedicate our JV baseball field. Uh, so much work and time and commitment went into naming that field and getting it ready. Uh, the Michael S. McDermott field, there'll be a 9 a.m. ceremony on June 19th, again at the high school with a 10 a.m. maroon versus white uh, baseball game. So we're looking forward to folks coming out to see that field uh, dedicated in a manner that it, it, it should have been, but we weren't able to do that during the pandemic. Uh, again, June 19th, which is a Saturday. And last but not least, I, I want to highlight uh, something that I've highlighted previously, which is um, KP Salutes. It's a, a flag project, which is being spearheaded by a member of the Barbarite family and a member of the Butler family. Um, there's a flyer that was distributed. So if you would like to sponsor a flag, they're $40 per flag. Uh, those flags will be up for certain key times during the course of year one being 9-11. Uh, we, we are currently working on and have applied for a permit for Saturday 9-11 to hold a march. We're currently calling it the We Are Family Kings Park March, which will lead from the flags along Kings Park High School. And we would march to RJL, where the 9-11 Memorial currently is. Um, there'll be additional flags that will be installed there, one for each of the fallen on 9-11. Uh, there will be seven of them, and we have an Eagle Scout who is working on doing a refresh of that 9-11 memorial. So kindly uh, think about if you might want to donate $40 towards a flag and pencil in 9-11, which will also be the 20th commemoration of 9-11. And that is my report. Thank you, Dr. Beaton. Um, I think that, you know, the whole 9-11 parade to recognize the 20th anniversary is you know, a wonderful idea. And thank you to the women who are spearheading the flag donation project. It's, it's really very worthwhile. Um, and also, um, I'm glad that we're finally going to be able to do this, this dedication to Mr. McDermott. And that was the 19th, you said, right? Correct. It's a Saturday. Great. Um, it's hard to believe that we have that 20th anniversary of September 11th. Um, I'm sure we can all remember where we were that day, what we were doing. But what I like to reflect on is how we all came together the days after. And how something tragic that so happened to us, we all came together and stood by each other. And I am so proud to be part of that for the 20th anniversary as we stand and march together to um, remember our part. Um, and um, doing that together in Kings Park is, is the Kings Park way of standing and working together. Um, this brings back a lot of memories, and I just wanted to, you know, I just was reflecting as you said that, and it wasn't what happened, it was all how we came together to help each other. So let's keep doing that. Well, and especially important as 
we look at doing it as a school community, and we look past, you know, even our graduates who aren't born yet um, on, on that day, on, on that original day, September 11th, and we do it as a school community and, and, and teach the younger kids what it's about and what happened. And the impact on people's lives is important. Um, so, so I'm really happy that we're doing something in the, in the school community. Um, but just other things on some of your comments. So on the funding for the field renovations, similar to um, one of the items we talked about um, a few meetings ago, persistence of our business office and team um, to continue after that money for two years um, will go to good use. Um, and again, the, the Coach McDermott field meeting is near and dear to me, so looking forward to that. And then just a, a shout out, I know it was mentioned last night for the Senior Awards Night, uh, to Mrs. Harris for all the work that she does behind the scenes um, to make all of that happen, um, to coordinate everything with the donors and with, with, with our seniors. Um, and a word to all the donors and sponsors, families, individuals. I know you didn't get to necessarily tell your stories last night, um, but know that the kids and the families that were lucky enough to receive awards, uh, when they applied for them, read all the stories, knew what they were applying for. I know, you know my daughter was fortunate enough to, to receive awards last night, and went back and reflected on those awards and what the stories were behind uh, the individuals. So, um, you, you all are thought of, uh, but it's really important and, and appreciated. Yeah, first of all, I'd like to mention the uh, Memorial Day uh, ceremony at the Veterans Plaza. And uh, a, a, a thank you to the American Major and Commander Ken Dolan uh, for presiding over the ceremony, uh, where I was both solemn and dignified. It was quite gratifying to see the Kings Park community uh, at, the, at the Veterans uh, Plaza that day. Second, I agree with Joe, uh, the Kings Park High School Awards, both, both the job well done and efficiently done. And Mrs. Laura Harris deserves kudos because she starts in about October, November in order to get one, one and a half hours worth of stuff, uh, you know, work done, uh, especially for this year. Uh, third, yesterday I had to drop off some information to the uh, high school and uh, Got to see some people, which was great. But uh, more important to me, uh, in passing of the uh, classes, though, it was great to see students who were, were happy, safe, and engaged in learning. And then finally, please don't forget King's Park Day. We're back uh, Saturday, June 19th, also on Main Street. So uh, I hope to see you there. Thank you. Thank you. So um, I have the statement I'd like to read. And um, and then we have a letter to read. So we would like to speak to the events that caused much confusion since Friday. We were, of course, aware of the letter Dr. Zucker from the New York State Department of Health sent to the CDC late Friday afternoon. As of Sunday afternoon, the district was prepared to act based on this letter. However, based on correspondence, Based on correspondence we received Sunday afternoon from the New York State Department, uh, Education Department, it was clear to the district that New York State was still mandating that masks to be worn in schools on Monday. All but three districts on Long Island followed that guidance. Monday, Governor Cuomo made it very clear to those three school districts that his directive stating masks must be worn in school is not subject to local school control and is a blanket requirement throughout the state. Failure to comply with such directives would expose the district to incur sanctions, which would include monetary fines, school closures, and the ability to operate in person. Those three districts have since reversed their policies and are once again requiring masks be worn in school. Accordingly, the school board has no option other than to with the law and directives of the governor of New York State. Since the district was given the latitude to rescind the mask requirement outdoors, we immediately adopted that approach. This evening, we signed a letter to send to Governor Cuomo, Commissioner Rosa, and Dr. Zucker concerning the opening of school in September. You will be able to find a copy of this letter on the school district website. Our goal is to open school as normal as possible in September. Dr. Egan will now read that letter. 
Dear Governor Cuomo, Commissioner Rosa, and Dr. Zucker, on behalf of the Kings Park community, our students, families, teachers, and staff, we are again asking for your help. We are not public health experts. We specialize in education. Our expertise lies in teaching and learning, leadership, and school management. As we all know and agree, the health and welfare of our students, their families, our employees, and the communities that we serve is of the utmost importance. Certain rules and regulations must be in place to ensure order and our collective public health. We have carefully listened, watched, interpreted, followed, and carried out every single one of the regulations and mandates issued from your collective offices since the pandemic began in March 2020, often delivering extremely unpopular details and information to our community. Throughout the pandemic, our school community has endured great hardships, yet we have persevered. We are very proud of the safety we have provided our students and employees as we successfully transitioned to full in-person instruction for the, all those who desired this model. Most importantly, this model has been successful without issue since implementation in late March, early April. With the support of updated school-specific health regulations and mandates, we have successfully resumed athletics, extracurricular and co-curricular activities, as well as many in-person end of year performances and celebrations. We know how important these opportunities are for the students and families that we serve. We urge you to continue to reevaluate regulations and mandates as we move forward towards September. Much has evolved and changed relative to our collective understanding of the COVID-19 virus, its ability to spread and its impact on members of the community. More data and scientific research now exists in terms of the impact these guidelines have on instructional models and students' overall well being, including their mental health. Additionally, more time has passed to study the efficacy of alternative models and requirements in place in other states and countries. We respectfully request that health related mandates specific to schools be continuously reevaluated based on current data and research so that we can continue down the path towards normalcy. As you finalize your planning for school-based health regulations and mandates for September, we hope that existing guidance, including that with regard to masks and quarantine, will be re-examined with an eye towards a return to a much more typical school environment. Governor Cuomo stated during his press conference on June 7, 2021, that when New York achieves a vaccination rate of 70%, all COVID-19 related restrictions will be removed. For the sake of the children, this must include schools, and we need to accomplish this goal as soon as possible. Furthermore, in order for school districts to be able to plan and accomplish, furthermore, in order for school districts to be able to plan and families to be able to make decisions with regard to their children's education in September, it is critical that any expected school-based health regulations and mandates for the beginning of the 2021-2022 school year be clearly communicated as soon as possible. Should you wish to discuss the success and struggles we have had providing for a safe school environment, We'd be more than happy to discuss our story with you. Let's work together to strike the right balance for our communities. Sincerely, Diane Nally, President, Joe Bianco, Vice President, Pam DeFord, Trustee, Kevin Johnson, Trustee, Dan Tu, Trustee, Timothy Egan, Superintendent of Schools. So we have now, we're now at public comments. Um, the Board of Education will hear additional public comments. Speakers must state their first and last names to the district clerk and then address their comments to the board. Comments by any individual may not exceed three minutes. A visible timer will be used to monitor this time limit. The public
public comment section sections of this meeting will not exceed 30 minutes in total. In fairness to all, speakers who exceed the three minute limit and do not finish when asked will have their microphone muted. Due to confidentiality concerns, the board does not permit speakers to raise issues concerning a specific student or a specific personnel matter. Such concerns should be presented to the superintendent after the board meeting. In addition, please note that the board will take no action at tonight's meeting. And so um, if we have anyone that has any uh, comments or questions, please use your hand icon or raise your hand. Okay. Um, Mr. Cobb. Thank you, Mrs. Nally. Hello, everyone. Clayton Cobb here, Kings Park resident and parent. So uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. I probably have a lot more than I can say, but I'll try to get to it quickly. Pardon me talking very fast. So um, congratulations to the retirees earlier. That was great and uh, wonderful. Of course, they're very important to our success. Moving on to my primary points. Um, the past few months, we've been begging for transparency and for you guys to listen and for you to communicate with us. I appreciate you uh, sharing that letter. Of course, we didn't know about it till now, but I appreciate you reading that. We'll take a look at that later. Um, since the election occurred, uh, though, we haven't really felt like we've felt any of this transparency or communication, and I'll give a few examples. So, uh, you know, you guys had that board retreat scheduled, and of course, that was already on the calendar, but it was at a really critical time where we really needed to have some community interaction and discussions about that reopening, because we can't just sit back and wait and hope that the, that DOH allows us. We need to be fighting for every every inch that we can get. So the board retreat occurred. I did request that we have some public comments or, or you reschedule it. You guys couldn't do it. I understand. So then you said, hey, let's uh, go to the next meeting. And so we put in a few formal requests. We requested a uh, reopening committee and to get that started right away. Also requested to have targeted uh, ways to remove those measures that are harmful, including the barriers, but also mask and everything else. Those haven't been responded to. Yes, Dr. Regan, you said I could meet with you and I did, but there's been no response to my emails and, and it wasn't added to this agenda. So then we had to wait till the very end of the meeting to talk about it. And here we are. Then we also requested meet in person, but you guys said it remotely and we weren't given any reason why. I've asked three times over email. I've asked to multiple people, no response. So we can't be there to really interact with you, which is what we wish we could do. We also see that you put it on the agenda for next week to also meet remotely and we don't know why. We need to be told why, because this is not, not okay. Um, and then uh, when the things happen over the weekend, you guys could have had an emergency meeting like some other districts and talked about it. Let us see your opinions. Let us see that you care. Let us see that you're trying, but there was nothing. There was just a communication. Oh, we can't, can't do it, so we move on. But that's not really fighting. That's not trying, and that's not communicating with us. And so then we had a rally tonight, and we got um, welcomed by the security guard saying if we approach the building, they're going to call 911 for a peaceful protest of parents in the rain just trying to get rid of masks that are harmful to our kids. I don't understand why you guys would do that to us. And we did it anyway because it's public property, and we didn't do anything wrong, but they still threatened to call the police on us, which is senseless. I can't believe that happened to us. So the last thing is, what I'm trying to say is, it doesn't matter to us what the DOH says, or if you say you have to follow the guidelines as mandates because they carry the weight of law. I don't care that COMAT got called or that those other districts had to change back. The bottom line is there's harms and there's benefits. Two studies just came out showing no benefit whatsoever to having mass mandates in school. And the one is published by the CDC, which is ironic considering they told Cuomo they're not comfortable with it. Their own study shows it, no benefit whatsoever. Then there's 20 studies showing the harms and you got kids nearly passing out. They can't breathe. They're going to the nurse. It's too hot. It just makes no sense. So if you know there's harms and there's no benefit, how can you follow it? If the DOH tells us you got to, you know, hit the kids every day because, because we say so, do you just do it or do you have common sense and you actually push back? That letter didn't say anything about, hey, this is ridiculous. You're harming our kids. You're making us do something wrong. We can't do it anymore. It was just like, hey, look at your stuff again. That's not strong enough for us. We want strong responses. Thank you. Thank you. If you can please wrap up. Thank you for giving the time. I'm sorry it took so long. Um, just wanted to state that there's no, only studies saying that the masks don't help in school, and there's only studies that say they harm us. How can we continue to do that in good conscience when we know that's the case? And this is public knowledge. It's not just mine. I can provide any of the data, any of the science. We need explanations. We need communication. We need to ha hear why this is happening. Thank you. Um, Mr. Cobb, I just wanted to thank you for your, your comments. Um, I also wanted to thank you um, I believe we, we did have our, our first uh, 
verbal conversation other than meet the candidate night over breakfast last week. Um, we spent over an hour, I believe probably close to an hour and a half together, um, which is good solid communication. And I did indicate at the end of that meeting that I'd be more than happy to meet again. Um, so should you wish to, to speak to me in the future, I have indicated in the past that my door is always open. Um, in this case, I was more than accommodating and met you off-site, which I certainly would do again, and I would welcome that. So thank you very much. And Dr. Regan, I appreciate you meeting, but I'm talking about the board. They're the ones that vote and make the decisions. So I'm sorry, I appreciate you doing it, but we've heard nothing from the board and we don't know anything about how they feel about this stuff. But I don't know if that's okay to ask for. Okay, so I, I think that I have told you in the past. Well, thank you, Scott, for your, your comments. Is there anyone else? Lisa Seabury. Lisa Seabury. Um, Good evening, everybody. My name is Lisa Seabury. I'm not only a community member, but I'm a parent of children in this district. Nelson Mandela once said, there can be no keener revelation of a society's soul than in the way it we, in which it treats its children. But this remains forgotten by you, the Board of Education, for not standing up for our children when they need you the most. Our children are being exploited as political pawns and punished with unreasonable and abusive mask mandates. As a mother, I can no longer bear to watch our children be abused with masks that impair breathing, cut oxygen, and cause miserable side effects. Masks that take away from any vision of emotion. Masks that scare our children into thinking there's this invisible monster in the air. This is a cry for help that can no longer fall on your deaf ears. This includes my son, five years old, who puts his head down on the desk constantly and comes home with frequent headaches, dizziness, and unusual irritability. Why? Because he is forced to wear a mask, an unnecessary medical device, all day long. My 10-year-old daughter in RJO is now constantly battling facial rashes, nausea, stress due to mask wearing. She also suffers from acute myopia, a degenerative eye disorder, and constantly strains her eyes to see through the plexiglass. She cannot see. Forceful masking is tearing our children apart. And yet you would prioritize retreats and retirement over the welfare of our children. The Kings Park Board of Education boasts about priding itself on mental health and wellness being a top priority, yet you seem to turn a blind eye to the facts. Myself and so many parents have reached out to you all to be shut out, placated with cut and paste letters and flat out ignored, and now of course, Zoom meetings. Maybe you are confused. These are not personal attacks on you. These are pleas to open up the dialogue and show me, show the parents of Kings Park that you are not just about dollars and cents, that you are about taking bold steps for the good of this children. We ask you to continue our fight with us and help us fight back like all the communities around us and hold in-person Board of Education meetings for the parents to attend. This is about human rights. So I'm gonna ask you a question. Are you the Board of Education going to set an example of bravery and courage for our children? Or are you going to remain silent and ultimately enable child abuse? Thank you. Thank you. Do you have anything else to say to me? Do you have any comments or any heart about what we are going through? No, you don't. Mr. Seabury, thank that we appreciate your comments. We did, we, we appreciate everyone's passion and fighting for your rights and for your children's rights um, and doing so respectfully. We do appreciate that. Um, and as Dr. Egan read the letter, we are advocating.
communicating as well for change. That is not, to me, that is just not a strong enough letter. Do you know how many times that I have reached out to, I won't name names, people on this board, other people in the school, and how many times I reached out to somebody specifically lately about what stresses and things that my kids were going through. There was literally zero response. You know what? We were rallying tonight because we need you to open up and listen. We need you to stand up for our kids. We need you to let us in the building so that we can talk to you. We need this. I need you to tell me that I am not going to be standing on the outside looking in. I need you to know that at the end of the day, it's not about the dollars and cents. It is about what's doing what's right for our children. I want a stronger letter than that. Are you gonna sit there and let our children suffer or are you going to really stand up and not cower down to the government? That's what I wanna know. Do you advocate for child abuse or do you advocate for standing up for our children? That is what we wanna know. Do you understand what I'm saying? Thank you for your comment, Mrs. Okay, so you guys have nothing to say to her, so crickets for her. So I'm going to ask the question, why is the June 22nd meeting not in person? What are your reasons? holding our Zoom meetings. Um, no, that what is the, you you have been holding. Why in June 22nd meeting, isn't it in person like it is for other districts? Why is Kings Park again behind the ball in having transparency for the community and the parents for their meetings? We still have limits on um... Open meetings law does currently allow districts to meet via Zoom, and that was extended by executive order through the end of June into the first week of July. So um, we, have talked, we have talked about going in person in July. Um, up, in, up until now, um, that was without question that we were continuing to do that. We do have a lot of student recognition on June 22nd. So, um, I don't know. Do we still have? Yes, let me. Can, can you speak a little louder? Because I can't hear with the masks on. Okay. So just, the, just the, the issue we're discussing is similar to. Yeah. So um, a lot. Of, there are several districts that are still holding their meetings by Zoom, and that's because of the capacity limits, and it's too. Wait, wait. I don't care about other districts. Why isn't this district well, holding a live meeting? Maybe. Maybe you could let Mrs. Sadowski finish. Yeah, you, you, you started by saying that every other district is in person. That's not actually true. Which is I didn't say every other district anyway. is ours. So why isn't ours? So the, there are capacity limits in place. And in order to accommodate the number of people, many school districts have remained on Zoom so that there is sufficient ability for more of the community to see and participate in board meetings. You can still hold a live and have in person like other districts are doing. And then my other question is why, uh, how are you going to have a committee for reopening? How are you choosing those people in the community to be on that committee? Is there an open enrollment? How can we have a committee? How can we as parents be involved in this committee? I don't believe we have. Um, my my understanding, have my understanding today is that September is going to be nearly back to normal. Um, no, no, that's that's not true, actually. And if it's going to be back to normal, then with the vaccines and masks, that's not back to normal. So how are you in Kings Park having a reopening plan involving community members? You're not because last year you did. And yep. this year, it's not normal right now at the end of the year. So how will we know going into the summer that we will have community input into the reopening in September? 
it, it is a requirement of that um, reopening plan that it does include community input. So yeah, so how are you choosing? So you, will you will recall that we did get community input earlier this spring before we did make a change to the plan. So we will certainly take your request into consideration and we will certainly include community input in any changes that we do make to our plan. And how will you do that? Will it be a public forum? How, because as a parent, there's no transparency. There's no outreach. How, how do we know that to be involved in that? Right, right. I think we have not formed that committee for this year yet, as we're waiting, we're, we're waiting to see what the rules are that we need to abide by. Hopefully, as Dr. Egan said, there will be little, if any, restrictions, and we'll be back to a more normal. Let me finish. Okay. We'll be back to a more normal year next year. If you recall, we have taken community input both before going five days a week. We did a series of community forums last summer about our reopening plan and we did have a reopening committee. If we do have a reopening committee again, we will solicit people to participate. And how do you solicit those people? Because a lot of people were unaware of the committee, how they were chosen in the summer. Well, the wonderful thing is we've had much greater participation in our board meetings this year. So we will have to, it will be announced. We have not formed it yet, so we have not decided on that process. But well, I want to I want to know before it's formed, so people can have input in getting onto that committee, not people you guys choose. We, we understand your point, and we will, we will take that into consideration. We appreciate your comments. Mr. Savage. Mr. Savage. Mr. Savage. Yes, good afternoon. This is Ed Newt Savage. Uh, we heard in the letter that uh, that you just uh, read that it said you have no option but to comply with the law. But it seems that the Board of Education picks and chooses what law it wishes to follow. The parents and the children have, we very strictly follow the law. The laws that are apply to the Board of Ed, however, are very loosely applied. And I'll give you two examples. Campaign expenses, contributions. Education law 1528 and board bylaw 1220 require detailed contribution statements to be filed by every candidate or a sworn statement that the contributions are less than $500. What's the purpose of this law? It's very important. It's transparent transparency. Who's contributing to our candidates? Perhaps their votes are motivated by the contributions. Just of course, hypothetically, maybe a real estate agent in town is contributing to a board member. Maybe a large property owner is contributing to a board member. Maybe a union is contributing to a board member. Perhaps that would sway what their opinions are. It appears that in Kings Park, we violated section 1528 because although expense statements were filed, contribution statements were not filed by any of the candidates for the 2021 election, nor for the incumbents in the 2018 election. And at least one incumbent in the 2019 election did not file a contribution statement. This is particularly important because Education Law 1530 permits five voters in the district to actually commence a lawsuit to compel contribution statements to be filed. I would assume the district mentioned before with masks that they're not interested in litigation. Why does the district not have an interest in, in having Education Law 1530 litigation? follow the law. You ask us to follow the law, why do you not follow the law? Second, public funding for political purposes. We've heard teachers, teachers that currently work for the district, were calling parents on their personal cell phones, espousing a political position in advance of this year's election. Now, we all know that that is well beyond the, the bounds of, a, of fairness in an election. Could you imagine the pressure that a parent would receive from a high school teacher calling them? Perhaps their child's grades and future would rely on the grade that that high school teacher gives. Now, we, all, we know that the New York Constitution prohibits public funds being used for political purposes. In fact, the Commissioner of Education says, schools cannot provide third parties such as unions with its channels of communications to espouse political positions. That's the appeal of McBride 39 Education Reporter 702. It seems that the channels of communication somehow were provided to the incumbent candidates because there were, can, there were 
parents that receive calls on their personal cell phones. Mr. Savage, if you could please finish up. Yes, I shall. Ultimately, my question to you is, if you want healing in the community, we at least need to stop the double standards. And I ask you two questions. One, will the board begin to comply with Education Law 1528 to compel all candidates to file contribution statements for this past election and next year's election? And two, will the board investigate the phone calls that were made to parents' cell phones and make its findings public? And what protocols will it put in place for next year to make sure that this does not happen? Thank you. Any answers? Anything? Um, we will certainly. Thank you for the comments. Thank you. Yeah, I thought so. Busted. Uh, Mr. Fitzpatrick. Boom. Be polite. Hey, how are you? Um, first off, you just totally blew that guy's question off. Um, second off, I just would like to find out, I guess, Dr. Egan just made a comment that it's to his understanding, school will be opening back up regularly in September. And I just want to make it quick. I'll give him plenty of time to uh, comment. What does he mean by opening up regularly and what in what makes him think it's going to open up regularly? Like uh, what has he received any kind of information regarding September? And uh, as far as regular, what are we considering regular? That's, that's my only question. So I'll give you guys lots of time to answer it. So great, great question, Mr. Fitzpatrick. I appreciate it. So, um, you know, I listened very carefully to the governor's press conference, which was um, Monday at 1130. And he very clearly said that when the state reaches a vaccination rate of 70%, that all restrictions would be removed. Uh, his words, not mine. Um, he also stated that the rate is currently at 68.6%, and it's projected that we will reach 70% over the summer. So if, if we take um, that into account, uh, I'm hearing that all restrictions will be removed. Um, that leads me to believe that September will be as normal as we can imagine it might be right now. Uh, we are urging the state, as you saw or, or listened to in the letter, and you will see when we post it online, that they release their guidance as early as possible. Um, unfortunately, as I'm sure you know, they did not release their guidance until late into the summer, um, which was not particularly helpful. We were actually beginning our, our reopening plan last year using the guidance from other states. Um, which I'm sure was, was helpful, but we needed New York State's guidance. So those two things uh, combined together will guide our work over the next couple of months. Um, but again, I'm, I'm pointing to the governor's words specifically and his press conference, which was um, just yesterday morning at 1130. Okay. Are you hearing anything about uh, vaccinations for the kids being a requirement for uh, removing masks? I'm not. Um, that would be a great question for um, Mike Fitzpatrick and Mario Matera. Uh, that would require a change in state law uh, for school attendance. So I would direct any questions regarding mandates for vaccines in their direction because that would that would require a change in law. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're very welcome, sir. Uh, Hi, good evening. Um, I do agree that, you know, some of the questions asked right now are very important. And um, I'm sorry to change the topic here just a second. And I do agree reopening and planning for reopening is important. Um, but I would like to just ask for a little bit of clarification. I'm um, going back in the meeting to the grant that was received for field improvements. What exactly are those field improvements and where is that $50,000 going? I just, I'm just looking for a little bit of clarification. Um, Dr. Egan, I know we have had some discussions with regard to some of this stuff. So I'm hoping you can shed a little bit of light about that $50,000. Yes, 
Yeah, sure. It, it's specifically earmarked for field improvement. Um, we were looking at the ball fields, um, softball and baseball included. Um, we don't have a, um, I, I don't have the, the total of the plan in front of me, but if you give me a call tomorrow, I'd be more than happy to talk to you about that. Okay. I mean, because, you know, being a member of the ABA, I do remember back in December, January of this year, we approved and the board accepted about $3,500 or $4,000 for a scoreboard for the softball field. I just watched my children play softball all season and there's no scoreboard still. Although the ABA contributed money towards a scoreboard, there's still no scoreboard. So I'm assuming, or I should hope that that money is being attributed to the remaining balance of the scoreboard and maybe some other softball field improvements because the field is actually borderline dangerous at this point. So I'm, I'm hoping that that's where the that is going. The board is on order. Um, have, you, have you followed up with Mr. Denniston on that? Um, we were told that there was a delay. We were not elaborated as to what the delay was, but that there was a delay. As I said, that that money was voted from the ABA about six months ago. Um, so again, we, as I said, you and I had conversation over a year ago with regard to the condition of the softball field and the fact that 50,000, I'm just, I'm just hoping that, you know, that the money is actually being spent where it is truly needed and a safety issue. Of, of course it will. And that scoreboard is on order. Thank you for the clarification, but I'll, I'll follow up tomorrow with you with a little bit further detail on that. Thank you. That's fine. Um, Caitlin Messina. Hi, thank you so much. And I appreciate the board's time this evening. Um, Dr. Egan, I was just hoping that you might be able to clarify your uh, last email that was just sent out. In part of your email, you had mentioned that you state there is a wide continuum of comfort level here in Kings Park when it comes to COVID protocols, including masking. Is that a data-driven statement? Is there a survey that was sent out to district parents noting their level of comfort with the protocols and masking, or was that more of an observation that you've seen through the district? And I'm wondering if there hasn't been a survey that has been produced, if the district wouldn't mind sending out a survey so we can see some data to support that type of statement. What, what I can tell you is that I have received communications uh, completely over the gamut. Um, there, there are families who have urged me through email over the last couple of weeks um, to not make any changes at all, um, that they're, they're still very concerned for their student safety. Um, and then certainly we have families and individuals who are on tonight that would you know, like to see masks completely gone and, and would have embraced that change for, for this past Monday. Um, so, you know, it, at this point, it is very much anecdotal, but I can tell you for every email that I get from one parent who wants things one way, um, there is an equal and opposite email that I'll get in, in another direction. Um, you know, we, we were able to hold a wonderful event at Kings Park High School uh, last night. It was the senior awards. Um, most of our attendees were, were maskless outdoors, which, which is great. Um, it was great to be able to have that event maskless. Um, but I can tell you that, you know, even watching people walking around on, on Main Street and uh, in and out of shops and in and out of our schools, you know, there, there's certainly a wide continuum of comfort level right now. No way. I, I think that continues to improve every day. Um, I certainly can agree to the fact that it certainly is a choice and I'm so thrilled to hear that there are events that are able to take place maskless. That's certainly an improvement from where we were about 15 months ago. And I think we can all agree to that. I wonder if I can charge the district with the responsibility of maybe producing a survey similar to what was sent out maybe last summer addressing the comfort level of the district's parents and maybe we can get a little bit more definitive data based on the feelings of our district instead of using anecdotal um, observations. It's just a thought. So just wanted to throw that idea out there perhaps. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other questions? Okay, thank you. 
Kim Watkins. Kim Watkins. Hi, my name is Kim Watkins. I wanted to uh, go back to the letter that was read um, that was um, going to be sent out. Um, with all due respect, that was not a very strong letter whatsoever. Um, I heard a lot of kind of patting our district on the back. Okay. Um, I heard a lot about what you have all done well. Okay. I've heard almost asking permission, asking for reevaluations of, I'm not really sure what I am actually gonna have to go back and look through that letter um, a bit more thoroughly, but there was several things about asking them to reevaluate, reevaluate, then going back to what you've done well. Um, Dr. Egan, when I had emailed you earlier today about if the district was going to produce a letter to anybody, any legislative power, you said that the district was finalizing that. Um, question, is that the final product that is going to go out? Because I did not hear anything about school choice, that Kings Park would like the choice to make these decisions for their students. I didn't hear anything about parental choice because I would like the choice to make that decision for my own child. So those are my questions. Would you be willing to revise this letter to include that you would like the choice to make the decision for your own students and to include parents as well, that they should be able to make the choice for their own children? If I could just uh, comment back to you. Yes, we have one letter collectively from the board. This is our second, I believe, from the board. One envelope. Or will you revise it? Will you revise it is my question. That's a yes or no question. Can I please finish? No. <laughs> you can answer the question if you're going to finish, yes. Are you willing to revise the letter to include school choice and parent choice? My suggestion would be, and this is what I wanted to say, we wrote a letter. We are taxpayers, we are community members. We all have families whose kids are in school. We are trying to do our best. If every one of you wrote a letter, thank I you. have. Thank you. That's what I'm here. That's what I wanted to hear. Yes, I have. Letters. So they won't revise their own letter. Is that it? You won't revise the letter? It's never good enough. It's never good enough. It's not good enough. It's not. We want more. It's not good enough. It's very weak. That's weak stuff. Point. That's why we're here. It's not good enough. I don't see why you need to ask Governor Cuomo when 30 other governors have no mask mandates, but you're going to beg Governor Cuomo who's a sexual predator and a murderer of New York grandparents. Don't beg him, right, force let's him. Stay, let's, let's stay focused on our issues. So the issue is, are you revising the letter? Because our community wants you to fight harder. We want mm -hmm. you to fight for us. Who is talking? Alyssa Schaefer is talking. Okay. The crickets and lies. You would know who was talking if they were in person. Okay. We want you to write a letter that is better than what you are providing for us. And it's a. Are you willing to revise the letter? Can I have Can I have my question answered, please? I have. Do, do we want to end? You're public? muting her now. This is why you do these over Zoom. It's, it's not why we do it over Zoom. Um, it's, it's, it's okay. Um, we are approaching the end of our 30 minutes. I do not have um, an I answer. Think, I think our, our I answer. We, we wrote our letter. We're all comfortable with our letter. That is the letter that we wrote. We are not. So please, please, please write your own letters to the people that unfortunately made these. We elected you to write letters for the community. If you can't do that, then step down. It's not good help. enough. The yeah. parents have to count too that. that you're how comfortable with the letter. Okay. Thank, thank so you for your comments. We, we will be 
um, ending com public comments. We appreciate your input. And, um, you don't appreciate our input. No, you don't. Guess what? You're not going to do anything about it. You're going to sit there on your Zoom meetings. You're going to hide and you leave every man for themselves. Well, guess what? We don't answer to you, okay? You answer to us. All right, you start fighting for our kids. That's why we put you here. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it's, it's you really are not, but okay. <laughs> yeah, I love the no comments on all the laws you broke for the election. You don't want to talk about that, but you'll you'll beg Cuomo for direction. We are, we are going to end our meeting. Uh, of course you're going to end it. Yeah, well, it the video out. will disappear. The video will disappear tomorrow. We won't see it. Yeah, it won't be on there. We know. It's the minor leagues, people. The minor leagues. Did anybody leagues. record this? Because they're not going to hear it. It's going to cut off right as the parents started talking. You watch. We're on Zoom or in person. And I, I want to commend everybody up until now for respecting the process. And the way we do things, the rules would be the same in person or on Zoom. You don't respect process or rules. Guys, we, we've, we've had our public comments. We've, we've public comments. Exactly. You don't even listen to us. I want to see this up tomorrow. I want to see this entire meeting up tomorrow with everything that we have said. Make it You're, go viral. Yeah. But other people have questions. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.